Okay, right. I did that like it was a quiz, right? Excellent. The difficult choice between... We're here today to talk about um, assisted suicide from a perspective of disabled people. Um, we believe that this is a lethal form of discrimination and that we are the people who are very likely to die from the result of mistakes and abuse. Um, we have information and personal experience of having a degenerative disability. We understand that we don't have um, the right to live often. We don't, we live in poverty. Um, we don't have support and we really believe that we need to do something um, today to speak about um, those issues and many other issues because our voices aren't being heard. We're fighting against a really big and powerful lobby which is mostly comprised of non-disabled people who are afraid of being like us. And so um, today we're actually um, having a game of Cards Against Humanity which has wildly inappropriate questions with wildly inappropriate answers. And we're really hoping to bring some awareness to Parliament today to um, help the people who are decision makers understand that we really need to have our voices heard because we are the people who matter in this conversation. So I'm here on the steps of Parliament today to oppose ass assisted suicide laws in Victoria because they're going to be really harmful for the disability community. We can't have assisted dying when we don't have the resources that we need to live and live well. Um, and I'm really concerned particularly what it means for young people with disabilities who may be going through a difficult time as a lot of young people do. Um, when you know going through crises and, and having some mental health issues and what it means for them and their families when they're going through this kind of stuff and yet they can apply to die on the basis of their impairment. And we've seen this happen in America and we've seen this happen in Switzerland and other places in the world where this legislation has come into place where young people have, have opted to use the legislation when really what they need is crisis supports and supports to help them live well and not to die. And I'm also concerned for people with acquired disabilities that may be going through a time of grief and loss as they adjust to their new bodies or minds. Um, and there is only a 10 day uh, waiting period to get approved for this legislation in Victoria. So it's a really short turnaround time. What does that mean for people who are going through an acute uh, depressive phase, but will actually come out of it and, and find ways of living with their new bodies and minds and, and having um, a fulfilled sense of self and a and fulfilled life, and yet they're going to be able to apply for this legislation um, and die. So I'm really concerned about how it frames disabled lives as inherently less than other lives. And when we live in a world that values us um, in a myriad of ways as being less than non-disabled people anyway, um, I really think it's opening up, it's opening up for a, a really, really um, dangerous and lethal space for people with disabilities. So um, I'm a fabulous queer and a feminist um, and my politics is left wing in a lot of ways, but on this one issue, um, I'm united with people that I wouldn't normally have anything to do with because I'm so concerned about what this issue can mean for my disability community. Um, yeah. Hi, my name's Anne Rasenberger, and I'm a person with Asperger's syndrome, but I'm also a um, holder of a Master of Special Education, and I work with a group of children who have special needs. And I'm concerned that this bill isn't representing the true concerns of people that it will affect the most. I'm concerned that people at the end of their life won't feel they can have a say, that vulnerable people with mental health issues won't be able to speak out. Um, we're here to protest the um, legislation of an assisted suicide bill which has um, it's called something different everywhere everywhere that's legislated something like this they call it something different they call it assisted suicide or they call it assisted dying or they call it um, physician assisted suicide or like dying with dignity um, or I think medical aid in dying um, and I've seen Victoria calling it like voluntary assisted dying, like if they put extra adjectives on, it'll be like, it's safe, safe, good, voluntary dying, safe, good, voluntary, good, happy dying, good, happy, safe, voluntary euthanasia, and you can't, like, 
I'm not religious, I'm not conservative, I'm really, really gay, I'm really gay and I'm really trans and I'm progressive and I don't want this legislation to go through, not as it is, not as it is. The people who would vote for this have, have not read the bill, they don't know the details, they just think, oh yeah, I want autonomy. I'd want a choice, but it's not about your choice. It's about the choice of a hypothetical you in the future who is disabled, and you're not disabled. And you don't know what choice you'd make. I used to be pro-euthanasia assisted suicide. I used to not know the difference. And then I became a fucking cripple. And I was like, oh, I actually rather like being alive. I can go really fast down hills. Like, the problem is your fucking curb cuts and your weird trains that have wheelchair signs or carriages that wheelchair users can't get into. The problem isn't, like, pain can be treated with pain medication. Like, yeah, we, what we have isn't adequate, but that's not like, oh, an adequate solution is death. That's the opposite of help. That's not help. So look, at a time where there are increasing pressures and cuts financially and rationing in terms of social care and welfare and health care for many different people. Is this the right time to be introducing medically assisted suicide onto the menu of treatment options in your state or country? No. And you know what? As long as we value certain lives differently, and we do, we value the lives of disabled and ill people and those who have greater dependence, we value those lives less. And as long as that's true, and as long as that's happening, we cannot enshrine that inequality in a law. So I implore you, that's why I'm here, to implore you to not legalize assisted suicide. It is okay to say no. We can't have assisted dying when we don't have the resources that we need to live and live well.